Hey, welcome back. This week I'm going to be showing how I built this metal melting forge here, walking through the steps. I used the angle grinder to cut out the two sheet metal halves of the forge. I'm going to use these two pieces of angle iron to attach those two halves together and to give me a good structural piece to attach my gas line to. Here I've got my finished pieces after they're cut out. I've got my two pieces of angle for the sides and the two pieces of plate that'll make up the walls of the forge. We've got them clamped to this large section of pipe using it as a bender. I didn't have a real bender but this was close enough to the right diameter so we just rolled it and forced a bend into it that way. This actually worked pretty well. Here you can see just roughing in the shape of the forge. We're going to end up having to fix these bends, get it a little bit more circular, but then we'll be tacking it together with the welder. This welder maxes out an eighth of an inch, and this is quarter inch angle, and I think sixteenth of an inch plate that it already struggles with. So you're going to have to forgive some pretty bad welds, but it did stick, so that's got to count for something, right? It was pretty easy to get the first side tacked together correctly, but the second side took a little bit of persuasion to get it fully lined up. This joint ended up being a little bit too shallow, and so we had to use a pipe wrench to force it to line up. Once this last joint is tacked together, we're ready to start tracing out the base. This entire forge body is made out of scrap steel, as you can probably tell. Um, I found this diamond plate on the side of the road at one point, but it works just fine for a forge body, which was nice. I actually managed to get the base of the forge and the lid of the forge out of this same piece of diamond plate, which was awesome. I tack welded the base to the sides and took that opportunity to do any final bends that I needed to do to get the sides as circular as I could get them. This weld between the plate and the angle iron, I ended up kind of giving up on the idea. My welder just did not have the power and the difference in thickness also made it kind of difficult to not melt the uh, 16th inch plate with the quarter inch angle iron. I lied a little bit when I said that I had enough room to get both pieces. Unfortunately, I did not quite have enough, but I cut out a little extra strip of uh, diamond plate and I ended up just welding it on there and that worked totally fine. Um, I had to do a little bit of grinding to get it to fit upright, but then from there, just one continuous weld across and can't really tell. It's on the bottom anyways, so you can't see it. Probably a waste of time, but I added a full weld along the entire seam between the base and the sides. If anybody knows that this was actually useful, let me know, but um, I figured it couldn't hurt. Although it did hurt, it was like $40 for all the MIG wire. Next, I'm marking and cutting the hole for my burner. I used a pipe union so that way I could unscrew the outside part from the inner part of the burner. That way it's easier to store. I couldn't weld the union to the angle iron since it's cast iron, but I used metal epoxy which should hold up to about 540 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that should be plenty on the outside of the forge, but if this doesn't work I'll replace it with something else. I also used the metal epoxy as a bit of a filler to cover up the worst of my really terrible welds here. Finally, the insulation part of the forge. I've got these K-wool sheets here. I'm fitting this to the inside of the forge and marking how much I need to shrink it by. It cuts really easily with a razor blade, which is nice. Although I was making sure to wear a respirator the whole time I was working with it. This is the inside of the pipe union you can see there. And now I'm just cutting the K-wool so that it fits inside. KO wool is obviously pretty soft, so I'm using these fire bricks as the base. I'm going to coat this all in refractory cement, but I want these fire bricks as a firmer base, and then I'll surround it with KO wool to fill in any gaps. With the body of the forge mostly done, I'm moving back to the lid. Here I'm using the last of my diamond plate to cut out this long strip. 
This is going to be a lip along the edge of the uh, lid, so that way there's room to fit the KO wool inside. You guessed it, more tack welds. I ended up just bending this by hand and then tacking it in place as soon as I got it bent correctly. Surprisingly, this actually worked. I was expecting something to go wrong, but it never really did. Starting the second side here, I actually ended up bending this one a little bit before I started to weld it, just to make it easier to line up. I marked the center here for the hole in the top of the forge, and then I terribly cut it out with an angle grinder. I ended up just making a bunch of slashes and then breaking them out with the wrench. And then using a mostly worn out grinder disc, I could fit it in there to clean up the hole. I guess if it works, it works, right? I don't know any better ways to cut a large hole in steel diamond plate. Next here, I'm going and just tracing out the KO wool. I purposely have this a little bit oversized. I'm gonna cut directly on the line, even though the line is outside my actual lid just so that way the cable is compressed in there and it won't want to fall out so much. I'm going and filling any last gaps with other little scraps of cable to make sure I've got a good surface. And then in a moment, I'm gonna go and flip it over and now I'm starting to cut out the hole for the top. It's gonna to go all the way through the cable down into the forge for the air outlet. This part here was really satisfying, taking satanite mixed with water and coating all the walls with it. Um, the extra insulation was nice, but mostly I just want to cover up the KO wool so it's not putting carcinogens into the air every single time that I run the forge. I don't really know how bad KO wool is to breathe exactly, but I've heard that it's not great, so I try to keep it all covered up. As soon as I fire the forge for the first time, it'll solidify all the... Uh, satanite and give it a nice hard surface and it'll also protect the base a little bit extra if i'm rubbing the crucible back and forth as i pick it up and set it down i thought it would be a fun project to throw in there to make some tongs as well so i took some uh, rebar and some old rod that i'd found sitting on the ground somewhere bending the rebar to make it a kind of hook shape to hold the sides of the crucible. It took a little bit of trial and error to get the curve just right, but we would just go bend it a little bit and then check it against the crucible itself to see if we had the right curve. I ended up just cutting it to the right length with the uh, angle grinder. I used about a 60 degree arc on both sides in the final set of tongs. I used the 7 inch angle grinder to put a flat into the handles where they would ride against each other when you open and close. And then I just drilled a hole straight through for the uh, pin. Now I'm assembling the tongs. The two handles are bolted together with a washer in between them. There's a nut on the other side of that bolt that's going to get welded in place so that way it can't come undone during use. Once I welded on the pieces of rebar from earlier, the tongs are ready for use. I forgot to record when I made the burner, but basically there's a cap at the end of this gas line and there's a threaded hole with a MIG tip threaded into it, and then these four bolts to hold that MIG tip centered in the uh, pipe adapter. You can see I'm using the free end of the union here to screw this on, and that way I can unscrew this whenever I'm not using the forge. The forge works fine for now, but it'll need some fine tuning to work as efficiently as it can. That'll have to come in a second video, but in the future I'll be melting some metal and possibly making some cast iron parts for the lathe project. That's about it for this video. Next week I'll be working more on the lathe, so it'll be great to get back to that project.